Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we'll be filling a viewer request for a visa. Uh, but before we get into the video, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. I do not have an individual holding a visa, but I probably own it in one of my index funds. So keep that in mind. But at the end of the day, I'm going to give my unbiased opinion on the company. So going into the video. Uh, market cap 370 billion, revenue 29 billion, net income almost 15 billion. So just looking at that alone, very good margins. Current PE of almost 25, five-year average of 30. So kind of right in line right there. Uh, profit margins 51%, outstanding, right in line with their five-year profit margins. Very, very nice. Uh, and gross margins of 80%. Price of sales 12.60. Now this is probably on the higher side but with these margins you're it, it's reasonable to have a higher price of sales but still 1260 is probably a little bit high a uh, year-to-date free cash flow 16 billion kind of in line with their five-year average nice growth right there um, five-year average of 12 and a half roughly they have a 0.8 percent dividend dividends paid 3.11 billion dividends paid so taking that out of their year-to-date free cash flow that's probably right around that 18 to 20 percent of their free cash flow goes to that dividend so plenty of room for growth right there um Return on assets, very good. Return on equity, very good. They invest their money really good, right in line with their five-year average on their invested capital. Yeah, pretty solid metrics. Uh, if, if Visa, when, you, when you're dealing with companies that have solid profit margins and gross margins like this, normally it everything else kind of falls in line, ex especially if they can consistently put up numbers like that. And for the most part, pretty uh, uh, right in range with their five-year numbers. So pretty good stuff there. So let's click on the eight pillars. And yeah, uh, the companies like this where you see these two red X's, it's just a matter of valuation normally. But at the end of the day, long-term liabilities divided by their five-year average free cash flow. Now, that's going off of their five-year numbers right here. Um, if you're going off of their year-to-date free cash flow, this is probably even lower. But this is insinuating that they can pay off all their long-term liabilities in about two years. And then a solid growth everywhere else. So, yeah, I like what I'm seeing. So let's jump into the income statement and go look at the revenue. Now, this is on four quarters. We'll keep it here for a second. You can see, I mean, just consistent growth. Now, the COVID year, a little bit of just a down on revenue, but right back on track in these last uh, two years. Uh, let's go check in on the, <clears throat> actually, let's look at the cost of goods sold so you can see this increase right here in cost of goods sold a little bit less than a billion but their actual revenue grew by uh, about 3.7 or 3.3 billion roughly so really good revenue growth in my opinion you can see the gross profit right here uh, just consistent growth all the way through that's what you want to see very nice going over to the quarterly you can see their third quarter revenue actually had a nice little decrease right here i'm not sure when they reported these numbers but might be worth looking at something because this is going back to those covid lows um i'm not sure if they're lows let's click back real quick so you can see leading up to covid pretty solid growth and this covid year if we switch back over to this second quarter of 2020 this was their decrease but then back to really solid revenue growth right there, or operating revenue. And uh, yeah, now th th this is something that I would want to look into because what, what, what was it that made them fall off of this course right here of this consistent revenue growth? And nothing really changed with the cost of goods sold as a lot of companies, their cost of goods sold are going up with the uh, current economic state that we're in. So something to look into right there, but at the end of the day, their operating income, this is the business, what the business model itself is bringing in, taking out other expenses. Pretty solid growth still on the operating income. So I'm sure they had specialty income charges. No, they didn't. They didn't have specialty income charges. There's, uh, there's probably something that's tying into why this revenue is down a little bit. 
net income they were still had very solid net income growth right there so in going off this net income to this revenue this is more than this is right around that 60 percent margin so that's very very good uh let's go down to the shares Ooh, ooh, that's interesting interesting so buying back a lot of shares Oh, it's a little bit all over the place. So bought back a little, stayed, bought back, bought back, issued some shares. So I'm sure the share price with that COVID year, this is where that return on equity comes in. They issued a ton of shares. I'm sure their share price was up quite a bit. And then they bought back a ton of shares right there, stayed flat. Now they issued some more shares right there. I'm sure they did a very good job of issuing uh, when, at a more of an elevated price. It's tough to say. And then they haven't paid this dividend this quarter, but it looks like this dividend growth is there. So if we're looking at this dividend growth, 2020 they paid a dollar 20, 2021 they paid a dollar 28, and then 2021 into 2022 that increase in six cents is. I mean we can go calculate that real quick. Uh, so 0.32 is what they paid the previous year. Multiply that by 4, so 128. Now let's do 0.38 times 4 divided by 128. This is insinuating the growth. So dividend growth of 18.75%. That easily covers the current inflation that we're sitting at. So even though the dividend is only 0.8%, that dividend growth that you're getting for holding the shares is covering that inflation. So that is what you want to see in any type of dividend company. And and also tying in the payout ratio of the company, which is roughly around that 20%. So pretty solid uh, in terms of looking at the dividend aspect of Visa. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to look at right there. Let's look at the four quarters and look at these shares a little bit. So yeah, at the end of the day, they they are, they've been consistently around this two billion over this two billion, and now they're still at at 1.9 billion shares. So they're still consistently buying back shares. That's what you want to see. Now you can see the dividend growth. Here was the 20% increase. This is roughly a 6% increase right there, and now they go from a 6% increase to increasing their dividend by 18%. I would imagine that this dividend growth, especially with the 20% payout ratio, that this is going to continue to grow year in and year out because it's not taking much of their free cash flow. If they can consistently put up that free cash flow, I would expect this dividend to continue increasing. So next thing we want to talk about is the long-term liabilities. Let's go to the balance sheet. Plenty of cash on hand and growing cash on hand. And this is on a quarterly state. So uh, just looking at these last three quarters, $12 billion, $14 billion, $15.7 billion. They're growing their cash. Same with their, their current assets. Growing, growing assets. That's what you want to see. Uh, total assets, $85 billion. To go look at their long total liability so current ratio of about 1.8 so yeah visa is not going under especially with those margins uh, very solid current ratio and long-term liabilities 29 29 billion and if we go back to the metrics tab of free cash flow year to date 16 billion you take 29 billion divided by 16 billion if they're able to continue that uh, year-to-date free cash let's insinuate and they can pay off their long-term debt in 1.8 years so very very solid right there I would say uh, yeah pr pretty solid I think uh, I am actually gonna dip into the stock analyzer tool here so let's go pull up uh, stockanalysis.com we'll type in visa Go to the financials and let's determine what type of revenue growth we're going to look for right here. Uh, switch it to a quarterly. So you can see that this little decline right here. Now this doesn't have that third quarter. We know that third quarter is going to decrease a little bit. So I might uh, dip, uh, be a little bit more conservative on those revenue numbers. But let's also go to macro trends and pull this up. Visa. So here's this revenue. They do not have that. Oh, they do have that third quarter right here. Hmm. Why is it saying that they had 
seven seven. Yeah, I might have to look into that a little bit because if we go on this quarterly for this third quarter, okay, so it's taking this revenue right here, but they're operating revenue with the decline, so I don't know how I feel about that. But at the end of the day, their their actual revenue that they posted still had pretty solid growth right there. So back over to the pretty consistent right around that. I I, I like the high gross margin, so I, I think I am going to play that in factor that into this model a little bit so let's go over to the stock analyzer tool and let's just go on the low side we'll go 6 10 14 I like that revenue growth now looking at their five-year and ten-year numbers I might even tweak this down a little bit we'll go nine and twelve just to bake in a little bit more margin of safety profit margins really consistent right around that range but let's go look at the margins real quick and you can see the gross margins very solid gross margins operating margins for the last nice shelf right here in the 60s a little bit of a decrease in 2016 but right back into these 60s i really like that operating margins now looking at the net margins 2016 was definitely a funky year i'm sure they had some sort of acquisitions in there we'll go look at that before i finish this off but a good shelf right here in the low to higher 40s and then a nice shelf right here really consistent around here so i I would say it's pretty fair to assume right around this 50% net margins unless something drastically changes with the business. So we'll go to these profit margins. We'll go 46, 48, 50. I feel that's more than reasonable, probably a little bit on the lower side. But as I, as I always state, it's always good to bake in as much margin and safety as you possibly can. And we'll use these, these same numbers for the free cash flow. Now for a PE for a 6% revenue growth, I'm probably going to pay that 16 or 14 to 18. So we'll go 16, 18, and 20, 16, 18, 20. We want a 15% return for a 10-year analysis. We're going to hit analyze. There you go. Um, so yeah, as I stated, probably a little bit on the high on the higher side. Now if I wanted to tweak these numbers and I wanted to stay more condensed and this double digit growth because they're growing pretty solid and I'm sure that COVID year is probably tweaking into some of these five year and ten year numbers that COVID year was a down year we'll go 10 to 14 percent and we'll just leave this at a flat 50 percent across the board now insinuating a 10 percent growth probably gonna pay 18 20 and 22 18 20 22 for a 15 percent return okay we're, we're right in there now if we're looking at the stock price of visa did it get down into these 180s it sure did so if you believe those high numbers uh recently we were down into this buy range now just looking at this i haven't looked at anything charting related with visa but you can see we have a nice descending channel going down you can see boom boom i'm sure it, this this rejection right here is setting another low so you got a high a lower high a lower high a lower high and a lower high and it's already seen action right there if this uh support is able to give out that is where you're looking for it i'm sure there's gaps on the way up right here that you're looking for it to fill now this is in the one now the low for this covid drop was down the 135 if i go back to my stock and it uh, analyzer tool would I be interested in this stock if it got down to 135 yes I would I would be very interested in that but um, nonetheless before I wrap this video up let's go over to the chart and do a little bit of charting analysis on Visa as you can see I have a pretty clean chart I have not looked at this chart but oh yeah this is this is what this is what I was talking about off of that first glance you can see direct correlation with that you have multiple points of contact one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten points of contact now it had it been able to push this you know it did have earnings that came in place right here but on that earnings day let's go zoom into this a little bit you can see that we left this gap right here let's mark that gap now you can see on today's trading day we got damn close to this so that on this gap up it was the earnings day let's see what they did right in line with the numbers that analysts were expecting and here we are 
we're trying to get down to this gap now do we have some sort of uptrend that we can go off of right here we sure do boom 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 this is actually the third point of contact that we're putting a wick into right here and they're getting ready to pay their dividend not a big dividend but as i stated before that dividend is growing uh, so let's switch this over to a month chart and see if we have a long-term uptrend that we can set. We know we have that downtrend. And it looks like we do probably have an uptrend that we can place right in here. But the interesting part about this, uh, yeah, from the start of existence back in 08, you have this sell-off right here. And we are kind of past this down or this uptrend. Now I would want to look inside of this right here for any types of gap fills right here. Now you can see on the month chart we do gap up right here, and when we are the lows that we almost set pretty much a double bottom. It opens up the next month a little bit higher. But you can see this wick goes to the same exact spot. Let's mark that with a horizontal line right there. And that comes down to 175. Going back to my stock analyzer tool, 175 in the middle of my middle and high assumptions right there. It, it could have been a buying opportunity. Maybe my numbers are a little bit conservative. But at the end of the day, that is what I w would have been looking for uh, a little bit more. You can see that line that I had put, we have a shaved green bottom right off of that line holding that support. Now I had this support given out, I probably would have expected a little bit of red engulfing to the downside, but this is what I was more interested in right here. Let's go see some of the gaps that need to be filled. We got a gap right there, gap right there, gap right there. Now on the COVID drop, here was gap right there. This isn't the COVID drop, this was the COVID drop. But a couple gaps that need to be filled, but you can see this gap up right here. Let's see if this ended up getting filled. This got filled on the money, so we gap up right here on an earnings day, and then we came down one, two, three. Just a simple ABC structure down to this gap fill where we ended up staying bullish right there. So yeah, a couple gaps that need to be filled, but look at where these gaps are at these gaps from 135 to 121 let's go back over to my analysis right here that is right in the middle of my low and middle assumptions if a price is to get down there that is going to be very attractive to me um, but in the in the short term I would expect you know can this uptrend hold and how is it going to act with this with this downtrend right here you can see the one the 10 points of contact on this downtrend right here now you can see when this this long-term uptrend that I set right here, you can see it holds twice and we gap down right below it. Now what happens when we extend back up, we meet and for start forming this downtrend right here and it actually taps the top or the bottom part of my long-term uptrend. How interesting is that guys? Uh, but nonetheless, um, you know, very solid company, but from a charting perspective, I got to see it push this this downtrend before I'd be interested in it. And I'm looking for it to, if it does continue to get rejected. So let's take this short-term uptrend out. Now, if this is able to get a pop from this uptrend and go and hit this downtrend again and set a double top, that is going to be very bearish in terms of what I mean by double top is a lower high from this. I'm expecting the price to continue going down. Now, if you have a high, lower high, lower high, lower high all the way through this, I'm going to expect lower lows all the way through this. Now, if it gives out this support right here, the next thing I have marked on my chart is 160. And I'm sure there's other gaps that need to be filled in there. I can see there's a gap right there and a gap right there. Let's go see if those were filled. You can see the 170 never got filled. The 167 never got filled. 160, 151, 135. So where would I be interested in potentially starting a position for Visa? You know, my middle assumption is pretty, pretty close to that 150. Going over to the chart, we got 151 and a half. I'd say that's probably pretty justified right there, 150 and a half. And uh, that's my take on Visa. Now I have my chart set up. I'm looking for this support to eventually end up cracking. And let's see it come down here and fill some of these gaps where we're more interested in the stock price. I hope you enjoy the video, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.